Good morning everyone, my name is Christian from Two-Headed Wolf Gaming and welcome to Total War Attila. What we are going to do during this campaign is that we are going to go for a quick break from the Thrones of Britannia titles and for one campaign do something a tiny bit different. And I'm going to go for the Age of Charlemagne and the reason why I'm doing Age of Charlemagne over a grand campaign here is because the basic campaign in Total War Attila is mostly focused on surviving for a big amount of years, a huge amount of years actually. And it will make it to be quite a long series, I definitely want to come back to this campaign and as one of viewers recommended, go for playing the Huns, playing as Attila. And I think that's quite a good idea. I've never played it before, I never played the horse. I mostly played either migrators and settled them quickly, or I think my first campaign was the Eastern Empires. And it is fun, but it's not what I want to do right now. We'll keep Total War Attila for some in the future. For now we're going back to the Age of Charlemagne. So what do we want to do in the Age of Charlemagne? Well, I took a look at all the faction. Uh, starting as the Kingdom of Charlemagne, that is a bit too big for, for my liking. I do like to start with a few territories and take my peak of expanding. Here we start with a bunch of territories that are under our control and mm, doesn't appeal to me. The Kingdom of Asturias might be really nice to pick. The Avars, the Avars will be would be a pretty nice pick for going with that kind of horde mechanic, mostly having cavalry based armies. The Emirate of Cordoba somehow it's not what I want to do right now. And then there's the Kingdom of Lombards in Italy, there's the Kingdom of Mercia and Westphalia. The Kingdom of Mercia and Westphalia, they're very close uh, to the gameplays that we've played already. Even though this is a bit later than our previous campaign, I don't know. It doesn't really seem to me appealing right now, so to speak. I wanted to move away, I wanted to move away from Britain and pick a faction that would still represent some um, some battle styles and units that we are familiar with and i went to the house of lombardy what's different about this well let's see the lombard's journey has not been easy having fled from the relentless hunts and the freezing weather they found relative safety in the western europe Later they assumed control of former Ostrogothic territory, established their capital at Pavia in AD 572 when Autari was subsequently crowned king. A new era of unprecedented peace was ushered in, enabling him to consolidate royal power Hitherto, um, Hitherto held by the powerful virtually autonomous Lombard dukes. Now with the Desiderius sits on the throne of a powerful kingdom facing fresh new challenges, civil unrest and aristocratic dissent are brewing whilst the papal states grow bolder with backing from the ever-hungry Franks. However, the Lombards have endured for centuries and forged a path where other kingdoms have failed. Their future will no long will no be will be no different. And I really need to get myself some coffee. I should be, spon be sponsored by coffee because I feel I'm saying this in almost every video. So faction traits, they are great rulers, all must bow their heads to the rightful king. Income of plus 200% tribute from puppet states, tributary and puppet state levies plus brief of each type of unit. Don't know what this does, I understand what that one does. And so we'll start with no advisor help, yeah limited, we'll put the battles at 40 minutes. And the difficulty will go with hard, not gonna go with very hard, I haven't played this game in a while so. We just have to reach Imperium, meaning we have to expand our territories. 
Yeah, let's start to watch the intro movie and then we'll speak more about this campaign. The Lombards have endured for centuries against hardship, emerging ever stronger. Italy is in upheaval, however, and you must rise to meet the dangers head on. Your control of the Italian peninsula must be consolidated. Spoleto and Benevento must recognize your power, be it through subjugation or total destruction. Furthermore, the Papal States grow bold and impetuous, bolstered by their alliance with the Franks. They occupy precious Italian land, and so must serve your interests first, one way or another. Further south, the theme of Sicily pushed the Byzantine agenda, foolishly desiring to reclaim the lost Roman Empire. Watch events here carefully. Yet the Franks, powerful but divided, present the greatest threat to you. Should they consolidate, there will be few able to stand against the Frankish king. Enemies surround you, but the Lombards have weathered worse storms. Stand tall and do battle against the whole world. Age of Charlemagne, war readiness and formation. The sign of a great leader is in knowing how far your people can be pushed. Wars are significant dramatic events that should not be undertaken lightly. Each turn you are at war with your, your faction, wars readiness will increase. When it reaches a high enough level, your faction will begin to receive penalties that will increase as time wears on. Additionally, losing battles will have drastic effects on war readiness depending on the severity of your defeat. You can, however, seek respite during peacetime. While at peace, your war readiness will reduce quickly. Furthermore, signing peace treaties will cause a large one-off reduction. Should war be forced upon you, however, you may slow, halt, or even reverse war readiness levels by winning decisive battles and, as, the, as a last resort, by withdrawing your men to within your own borders to help slow its increase. Wars must be concluded swiftly and decisively, manage diplomacy careful, but be aware that at times uh, of conflict, the greatest enemy sometimes lies within. And we gain our first mission, petty lords stare like dogs at the carcass of Europe, a true king must rise and scatter these pretenders, reach Imperium level 3, new bonus objective added, and okay. So here we are on the map, uh, some of the shadows. Uh, like I've moved the shadows to medium just to get a few extra 
frames but you know I might just go up because it does look a bit weird anyway I won't be doing it this episode why this game well as far as age goes we start in 768 AD I think Thrones of Britannia starts in the 800s I think that was the case right somewhere in the 800s and one of the things that I found very charming, especially after playing Total War Attila and going for uh, the following campaigns, the last Roman and then this one, is that there is a clear movement from the Dark Ages, right, in, into this early medieval to late medieval ages and or I think it's, they're called the High. And, and the game has, like Thrones of Britannia, I personally believe that like Thrones of Britannia, this game has its own charm. It doesn't have too much complexity. Uh, in regards to the number of units, there are very few, very few. In uh, regards to the type of buildings that you can build, they are in certain ways unique to this own game. But I do like, like, take a look at the drawings. It feels like some of those early drawings that you would find in books. Remember those uh, religious books that you would see? Uh, I really feel that this game has its own magic. Let me try to increase here the graphics for... Shadows. Let's go to quality at least. Improve it by one. Um, yep, seems a tiny bit sharper. I will have to see how it looks on the recording as well. So yeah, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to go for... I'm not sure we're going for dominating victory. My idea, what I want to do is go for the long victory. Maybe we might even go for a short victory. At first, and then see how it goes. If we're enjoying it, if we want it to continue, then we will continue. But if you feel that it was a long enough break to return to Thrones of Britannia, we'll do that. This game came out before Thrones of Britannia. Graphically, you can see the differences. It's uh, Thrones of Britannia is def has definitely more quality in it. It has more uniqueness in every part of the land. But this is not bad. Either like look we have wolves we have boars there's a little life here and there just improving the map so let's see where are we at well we control a few territories and I think the map is here we have Lombardy that produces cloth we have marble and these are not this is the papal state or the team of Sicily okay they're not the papal states we have wine, we have salt, our vassals over here produce some marble and some wine as well. And then, I'm not sure what these are. This is Venezia. We we'll probably have to go to war with them. We have salt again. Yeah, this break in our territory, I do not like it. So we'll probably go to war with Venezia soon. I would also like to go north to Salzburg because they do have gold in their territory. There's iron as well. So there's quite a few directions in which we could expand. I know that going for the Pope, if I remember this properly, but attacking the Pope as a Catholic nation is going to make all the other Catholic nations go against you or get a penalty. And I think you get excommunicator or something along those lines. You can see that the map is not that big. We will be able to to force our way all around the land and probably finish this pretty quickly. Let's check our first few missions. All two settlements including the following which is Venezia. Okay, we will be able to complete this quickly and we would get plus one training capacity for 20 turns in all provinces. Maintain 40 units, minus 5% upkeep for all units for 20 turns, okay. Construct an abbey. 
and we would get minus 10% to, to religious buildings. An abbey is constructed in a settlement, maintain at least 80% of the relig following religion across all provinces to get uh, morale. And on civic at the end of the turn have 7500 talers per turn, Eeh, that's going to be tough. And research palace aristocracy. Okay, we'll take a look at research in a second. At your command. We have here Desiderius, our king. And he has some levy spearmen, some Gastalt swordsmen. Uh, this is a Lombard levy. Archers and a raider's cavalry. I don't really like the raider's cav. Let's see, what can we recruit? We'll probably... Can we get out of the settlement and recruit? I forgot. Oh, yeah, we can, as long as we're in our own settlements. So, I'll move him closer to Venezia. Um, maybe I should move him back to, to gain the armor as well, right? Okay, and then we'll recruit... Oh, I guess we could have recruited more troops here. Do we have a barracks? Yeah, we have a mastering hall. So we'll have to move back the next turn to get some of those. But I'll bring in two Lombard horsemen, another archer. Yeah, that should be it for now. We don't want the higher level troops at the moment because we're not... We're not that rich. How does this town work? Well, the combos work the same. See, we get some income from commerce by having this market village. There's more income from commerce. And there's even more income from commerce. Some of these buildings increase. You can see this if we exchange the market village to a manor. We would get more wealth from agriculture and we would get some wealth, 5% extra health from agricultural buildings. Province to each region. Okay, so in each region here, we have what? Food from fishing. There's some marble here. And so this particular manor, we don't really care for. Instead of having a manor, it's a lot better to gain that extra income from commerce, but we're not going to work on it just now. As far as this building, we have a court which provides us with some basic settlement, uh, some basic walls. Imperium, Imperium is used to increase in rank. Public order plus two, growth plus two. And we can change it to a church which expands on our religion and provides us with public order bonuses and we can go for a small city which provides us with uh, commercial wealth 10% extra commercial through all the buildings in the land this is probably the best building to build though there are barracks the barracks can only be built i think in regions with a court if we were to change this to something else we wouldn't be able to upgrade that anymore i think that's how it worked i can't fully remember Everything that was in here, but sounds about right. So we have that territory of Siena there. We, are, we have some public order penalties all around. And why is that? Well, mostly 10 for taxes, free from building, difficulty level minus 2, and immigrants minus 1. We start with Ravenna. Settlement has high walls, wealth. Plus 10% from cultural local business. Okay, we can develop this land. We have salt. We have a church. And we can increase some of these public order bonuses. Mm, do we have anything in Ravenna? Any kind? Well, except for the salt, no, we do not have any kind of bonus. I'm almost thinking about making our barracks here. And I think it's actually a pretty good idea to go the other way. 
They will have marble here. Yeah, make Pavia, make Pavia our economic center. Yeah, I think that sounds actually pretty good. So let's make this our economic center. With 2500, we will develop this land. No, we will change this to a court. And then use the opportunity to... We'll use the opportunity to construct a barracks here. Maybe demolish the barracks there. We'll have to see. Anything else that we should take into consideration? No, this is marble, this is cloth, so yeah. We'll stay at that. These territories we have orchards. If we take a look at economy, are we selling everything? Yeah, we're selling 100% of our goods. Because in this game, you do need to make trading Welcome, worthy guest. agreements. I trust you bring so let's get some trading agreements going on. Uh, I might go to war with you, so I don't want to do this now. Speak your terms. The Kingdom of Carlemagne doesn't want to trade. The Republic of Venice, I'm going to war with you. The Them of Sicily, I might go to war with you too, so I don't want to break any kind of relations there. Let's see. Technology. What do we want to do first? King's Decree. Fond of your head? Then you'll do as you are told. Public order plus two from bureaucratic reforms. Yeah, we definitely want those. Because it seems like our public order is going down. We can assign a governor. We have here, this is us. We have another son here, a statesman. Who is good at what? You're a leader. Providing us with extra authority. Which is good for public order, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yep. And we have a few other people in our court. We can assign free governors. So I am going to ask you, first of all, to be part of Lombardy. And with these two, you are cunning. If you are cunning, what can you do? Upkeep for units, maintenance, cost in govern. Okay, well, let's put them in X crate there. And Clef. So Clef, you are good as a general. This guy is an entrepreneur, replenishment, and unit recruitment. I would like him to go to Friuli. Because in the near future, we are taking over Venezia. So we'll have another province there. Edicts. What do we want to do? Growth and food production or construction cost and tax rate? Construction cost and cost, okay, cost rate. And we'll go here for rural development. And in here we will be adding... Yeah, another growth, because we do need to stabilize somehow the region. Food in this game is pretty simple, attrition or not, it doesn't have different levels. It's spring, we are respectable, giving us plus two to loyalty to our characters, but plus four corruption to the current value of income. At the Imperium Impressive, minus 10 food from Empire Growth, all provinces. Plus 3% upkeep for all our units and minor diplomatic penalty with most of, fact of the factions. War weariness is at zero and we have food surplus, plus one replenishment and plus one growth. I think we've docked an out. Let's end the turn. Generally speaking, campaigns do start slowly. The Kingdom of Italy. Extend your influence, carve out the kingdom in these lands and build a legacy that will last ages. Do this and eternal glory shall be yours. All will know and revere your name. So we can become here. We can become the Kingdom of Italy, providing us with plus 5 morale to all our forces, plus 1 loyalty, 10% extra trade 
agreement tariffs and growth plus 5 in all provinces. We need the province of Friuli, Lombardy, Exeret, Benevento, Calabri, Sicilia and Rome excluding Roma. So we need all the territories excluding the Pope's territory. Uh, let's bring him back. Let's add four swordsmen. Can we recruit more? Nope. And we'll upgrade the weapons and the armors there. Once we have those troops, I think we'd be in a good position to go fight. Uh, yeah, they have only three troops there. A Bastion, Onager and a sheep. And they have a few more troops. Let's see, what can we do with the spy? Because I forgot. What do spies do? They're cunning. They can start fires, infiltrate, build a spy network, cunning. Can they assassinate? That is the question. Hmm. Doesn't really look like it. We can't send them in. We're gonna go ahead to Venezia and see what's going to happen there. Okay, food shortage resolved here. Tomorrow public order is going down. As does here. Urbanization edict has happened. Um, do we want to do anything else? Can we do anything else here? Uh, not really. Let's end the turn and see where we are on the next one. Okay, we have a diplomat coming towards us. Building constructed. A court here on this side. And we have here a small city. Good. What would provide us? This provides us with a bunch of squalor. Squalor uh, increases the chance of a disease. Disease provides you with a bunch of penalties, as you can imagine. See, if I go to the next level, 20% extra income from commercial building, growth, and Imperium points, but nothing else. I am going to demolish this. I am going to demolish the blacksmith as well. Uh, for this city, let's expand it. And see. If we go for this construction for the chapel, it's going to provide us with public order in the area. Or we could go gallery. Let's see. How much gold are we producing here? 500 per turn. Minus 12% from corruption. We could reduce corruption in the area with a building well placed. But I think for the moment we just want the master hold. I could even go another level on the royal court for the extra public order and probably will do so. Okay, let's bring our king over here, close to the edge of the map. Nice. Bring two more, three more spears. Or two more spears and a calf. And I am going to dismiss these raiders because I do not like them. Disrupt settlement. Let's try to start a fire here. I'm gonna take some of his... Okay, success. Gonna take some of his buildings away and we gain some experience. We're trying to level up our spies as well. I am not I do not remember exactly how useful were agents in this game. Does Sicily have any allies right now? Let's check that map again. Oh, yeah, they do have 
allies, a defensive allies with the theme of Sicily. So it's going to be important to recruit an, another army. And I'm going to do so. We'll just wait for this turn to be over. A non-aggression path. Fact. Nope. We're just about to go to war with you. Okay, let's see what's happening here. She's religious. An unscrupulous rival has spread foul rumors about a member of your family. Give the give the order and they will be silenced. Pay him off or ignore. Oh let's use some of the influence to pay them off. Okay, here. What do we wanna place? We can add in a church. Maybe first of all, let's not do that. Let's just recruit an army. We'll recruit the raider. Commander. And we're going to give him a spear and a sword. Let's see, can we you do anything else? Can I get you some more experience? Yeah, let's start a fire. We have quite a bit of money to play with. Another fire successfully started. He, he is at level 2 now. I am shadows and dust. Let's see, what do we want him to do next? Determine, enable scout ahead. Sabotage building, sabotage walls. Sabotage walls could come in handy. Well, from Commercial buildings in the local province. Misdirect army. This could be good. So we could either consider making him an internal spy. Which boosts our economy. Or we could go and take him to misdirecting army. And I think I like the misdirection. He's not the greatest, he's good at cunning, but he's not the greatest at the rest of the things. Okay, let's go to war here. Your allies, their allies, totally fine. Okay, they have four spears, some cap, some archers. Yeah, not a whole lot. We need light siege towers to be built. Besieging Gonna take us a few turns. We hunger for battle. Let's see, we are in Genova. We should probably get some more troops, right? Defending this fort. So let's do that. Should probably upgrade Pisa next as well. So that they can't take it with small armies. That's our biggest fear. Yeah, that's about it. Let's end the turn. The Pope is moving diplomats all around. I think there might be a problem. I, I see some flickering throughout the screen. Our people look to find terms that will bring rest to all our swords. Okay, he wants peace treaty. No. Nope. So he went out and is attacking us. Let's do a quick save. How are we on time? Ooh, we're over. We're already over the time. So. I know there's been no battle during this episode, but it might be lasting us uh, a tiny bit too much. So what I'm going to do is save it here and I'll come back in the next episode with the battle and the rest of the campaign. So for the moment, I thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow in the next episode. Have a wonderful day everyone.